Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at the Platinum Maquier Classic. Very interesting entry-level Maquier pen from Platinum, and we have a very special guest with me. Um, it's my wife, Andy. Hi. So this is actually her pen, so I'm going to kind of get her opinion on it as well. Um, we, we kind of went in together on the light, neutral, dislike list, and she pretty much agreed with everything I had there and threw in a, a little bit of her own stuff, so let's go ahead and jump into it. Onto the size comparison. So here it is against the Platinum 3776, the Pilot Metropolitan, and the Pilot Vanishing Point. It's around the same size lengthwise of, as all of these, but it's a little bit more narrow, um, especially when it comes to the 3776. It's probably the chunkiest pin here. It's it's pretty close to the Metropolitan, don't you think? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, that's probably what I would compare it to the most, and we'll go ahead and check out an uncapped size comparison as well. All right, here it is uncapped next to the same pens. Again, it kind of keeps up with the Metropolitan, even the nib is roughly the same size. At this point, it's kind of dwarfing the 3776, which the 3776 is kind of short in hand anyway, and this one's a pretty good length. And of course, they're all kind of blown out by the vanishing point. All right, on to what we like about the pen. Um, so first thing that I noticed about this pen, which is the first thing I'm assuming you noticed as well, is the maquillage on it. Mm -hmm. Is that the reason that you bought it? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's pretty. It is very, very nice. This is the Crane Mount Fuji, if you're curious. They have a couple other variations. Um, I think this was probably one of the nicer ones that they had at the show. And we bought this from the Platinum Distributor. Um, he took us over to another uh, place to buy it, but it was Itoya, I believe. I don't the, remember. I think that was the distributor for Platinum in America. Um, but yeah, this pen was a little under $200 from them. Which, if you check online, it's about 144 so It's a pretty good price uh, there. It wasn't too bad here. But the uh, the Maquille is what really sells it on this thing. It's it's gorgeous. It is just, it's beautiful. The detail is amazing. And if you're curious about it, it is textured. It's not flat. It's not like a sticker. It's, it's actual painted on there. And the detail is just magnificent. Um, you, you can look at this and you can tell the individual feathers and things like that. And it looks like they used um, gold and silver dust as well. It, it looks really, really nice. This section's pretty good, too. Um, it's a little thin, but I think it's it's fine for your hands, it's, right? It's perfect for for people with littler hands, like me. It, it's, a, it's a little small in my hands, but it's fairly long, so it doesn't really mess with my grip at all. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty good size section there. The clip on this is very nice as well. It is, it's pretty minimalistic. I like the lines on it though. It gives it some sort of, uh, a bit of look to it, but it functions very well. There's a little bit of ramp. It's fairly plain, but it does work. It isn't great in larger pockets. Did you use the clip at all when you carried it or did you just carry it in like a pen roll or something? No, in the okay. pen roll. The gold accents actually, um, the clip, the finial band, the end band and the cat band all look really really nice especially with this gold and the maquillage on the crane's feathers and these yellow things do you have any idea what that is grass maybe grass <laughs> and the clouds i don't know <laughs> they're just yellow things they, they look they're nice so they're nice they're pretty they're pretty yellow things so it, it really it sets all that off and i think it looks overall as a cohesive thing very very nice and you don't really know i think because of the clip and the, all the gold there, you don't really notice the clip is, or the cap isn't really decorated the same as the body is. The nib on this thing is actually surprisingly soft. So this is an 18 karat gold nib, and it is a little soft. I wouldn't flex it too much. Um, 18 karat golds, it may not spring back as well, and you may actually uh, mess it up. Did you flex it at all, or you write mm -mm. you write pretty light handed though? Mm -hmm. I, I bear down a bit, so I noticed it. Uh, the flow is very very good. It's very consistent. I personally didn't experience any skips or anything, and I don't think you did either. Um, it's not super wet, but it's not super dry. Um, especially if you put a good ink in there, like in a Roshizuku or something, it's gonna flow pretty well. The size and weight of this pen are also. It, it's not too short for me. Um, it's it's right there at it, but in in your hands it fits pretty well, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a little narrow for me as well, but it's it's not it's not too bad. It's not unusable by any means. Um, it is one of the smaller Machia pens though, and when you go up in size as far as Machia is concerned, you're going up in price a lot. And like I said, the price on this 
at least on the websites I can find them, around 144 or so, and it's not too bad for what you're getting here. On to the neutral. First thing for me is the proprietary converter. Um, it takes a platinum converter, so the same thing you'll see in the 3776, or if you have a, um, oh gosh, what's the, a platinum preppy, um, same thing. They use those converters, they use those cartridges. This one came with two cartridges, I think. It did not come with a converter. Um, we did have to buy one with it. One thing that kind of irritates me, honestly, is the converter that you would give, they sell them in, in silver and gold, and which color would you buy? Gold, right? Because all the gold, no, 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 because when you unscrew it, it's silver. Isn't that fantastic? So if you're OCD about that stuff, that's going to really, really piss you off. Just throwing that out there. You can't see it anyway. It doesn't really matter. I'll just get whichever one's cheaper. Though they're normally right around the same price. The nib feedback, um, it's not horrible. It's platinum feedback. This is technically a medium nib, but it's pretty fine for a medium, I would say. I still have the, the issue of it felt more scratchier than what I would like it to be, but I was really nervous about getting it grinded down, so I didn't make that decision. Yeah, we, we bought this at the Atlanta Pin Show, and uh, Mike Masayama was there, and I asked her if she wanted to have it smoothed out, and she was like, nah, I don't know. So maybe we are going back um, next year, despite her saying no, that we spent too much money. We are going back next year. And we are not going back next year because we are saving to go to France and Germany. We're going so back next year. We're not. And it's going to be smoothed out. <laughs> Don't look um, forward to those videos. It's not going to happen. It's totally going to happen. Um, well, I'll, I'll leave you here. Um, but um, it, it's very fine. It's not too bad, but the feedback's there, and neither of us are big fan of it, fans of it. We normally go for a Western medium or Western broad if possible. Or whatever Twisby is. Yeah, whatever Twisby is. I, I usually get those in broads for her. The nib's fairly plain as well. Um, I know the light's a little bit tough, but you can kind of see it says 18K and then it says P and then it has some sort of um, Japanese symbol. Can you read that at all? Yeah. What does it say? Um, that's Naka, so that's like middle. So it might be a medium. It I is, think it is a medium. It is a medium. Yeah. But their mediums are very fine on this pen. So yeah, 18K, Platinum, and Naka. I hope I pronounced that right. That's it. There's no decoration or anything. And if you compare it to like the 3776 nib, which in my opinion looks a whole lot better, um, the 3776 nib has that kind of that um, Mount Fuji line at the top. And it, it, just, it just has a little bit more decoration. It's still subtle. It's still classy. But it gives you something a little bit more. And I think the nib kind of... I think it's too simplistic. I think if they had decorated it really nice, it would kind of set off the maquille a little bit more. It's a good thing it's not your pen. Yeah, it's a good thing it's not my pen. <laughs> um, the next thing is the body threads on this. I don't know if you noticed when I showed you the converter thing, but they're metal. Where the section meets the body. The body threads itself are plastic. Section threads are metal, so it is metal and plastic. So over time, that may wear down if you're rough on it and if you unscrew it a lot. But I don't imagine this being a pen that you would use every day um, unless you just aren't that worried about, you know, wearing it down, which it's inexpensive enough to where you don't have to worry about if you lose it, you know, you just wrecking your financial situation because a lot of Machia pens are up in the thousands of dollars. But that's that's about it for the neutral. It's just those couple of things. They're mostly gripes and, and personal preference stuff. On to the dislike. There's only one thing here, um, and I don't know if you noticed it at all. I pay a lot of attention to fit and finish. Like, um, did you notice any of the chamfering issues where the cap meets the gold pieces and things like that? I have no idea what you just said. Um, chamfering is just like the rounding of corners, so it's smoothed off kind of like this table here. Mm -hmm. It's not sharp. These are sharp. Can you feel that? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. So it's... it's it's okay. Um, it's not too bad. There are like steps on the cap here, so it's it's not super noticeable until you touch it, but it's there. I mean, that's with all the black pieces. Where all the black meets the gold, there's no rounding or anything like that. It's just, it's not great. The next thing, and this really, really irritated me, is right here on the cap band, you can see there's the secondary thinner band down here. And where they actually laid it on there, it does not match. It is uneven. Right there, you can see. And same thing with the band above it. 
So I'm actually wondering if that's, it might be that the black is laid over the gold instead. But yeah, um, it's uneven and it has a little bit of an offset there, which is kind of strange because normally on these pens in this price range, you're not really seeing too many of those issues. Um, it may just be me. But again, what you're paying for on this pen really is going to be the Machier. It's a little bit the gold nib as well. But if you want just the gold nib, you can get, um, there's a cheaper platinum pen. I think it's like the PTL 5000 or something like that. It has a similar nib. What you're really paying for here is that just absolutely gorgeous Machier. So you kind of get what you pay for. But it is um, the, it's printed, right? Um, it's screen printed, which means what they do is they um, they print out this thing, lay it down, they mm -hmm. give them a stencil, and they paint over the stencil. Mm -hmm. So it's not freehanded like a lot of, um, to for Machier, the freehand is going to cost you a lot more mm -hmm. um, because you need a more skilled artist. Mm -hmm. This is kind of like um, coloring in the lines, not not to you know knock it any. It's it's still extremely impressive, and I'm sure it's very very labor intensive as well. But it's not going to be the same amount of time and skill required to you know do like an Amiki Emperor or something that's going to cost you ten grand. All right, on to the writing sample. So here we have, again, the Platinum Machier Classic. And um, for those of you curious, this is a medium nib, but it is very fine. And in here, we have J. Bon, Encre Rouge. I, I'm probably butchering that, but that's it's fine. I don't speak French. All right. Um. So again, this is a uh, a fairly fine nib. It does have pretty good flow though, and you can get some some decent line variation out of it if you're careful. Um. We'll go ahead and do a reverse writing line. A normal line. And align with some pressure. So you can see you can definitely get some out of there. Just be careful with it. Um, it is, um, I believe, an 18 karat gold nib. I could be wrong. No, yeah, it, it is. It's 18 karat. So be careful when you're flexing. It's going to be a little soft. But the nib writes fantastically. Um, it does have a little bit more feedback than I would like. But it's by no means scratchy. It's... um. It's kind of like writing with a pencil for me. Um, if you don't bear down much at all, you're really not going to get any feedback. And it's still going to write, you know, excellently. On to the conclusion. So I'm going to give you my conclusion, and Andy will give you hers on this pen and what she thinks about it overall. Um, on, on my side, if you want to check out a Machier pen and add one to your collection, especially just to look at, I think this is a great choice. The nib performs fairly well, especially if you like finer nibs. This one's probably going to be right up your alley. Um, there are a few fit and finish issues that kind of bother me, but 144 bucks, you know, minus tax for a screen printed Machier pen is pretty good. What, what's your overall opinion on it? I was very blindsided by the the artwork, and it's beautiful, and that's the primary reason that I had bought it. Um. Thinking back on it, I probably, if we do go to the pen show next year, I probably will see if I can well. grind it down. <laughs> Maybe. I'll see if I can get it grinded down a little, the nib, because I it is... I think you mean smoothed out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, don't want, you don't want to grind this any finer than it is. I want it smoothed. Yeah. I want it nice and... Buttery. Yeah. Like my other. Like a Twisby. Like a Twisby broad on the go specifically. She's in love with that pen. But yeah, this is a really great pen, pen not pen. It's not a pen, it's a pen. Great pen, especially for this entry-level price. Um, this is around the price you're going to be getting your first gold nib pen at anyway, unless print. you... Your gold nib print anyway. Unless you go on, like, eBay or something and go to Japan. Um, I'm not sure how much these run in Japan, actually. I have no idea. I didn't look at them while we were over there. I know the Platinum 3776 was, what, $60? Mm. Super cheap. Um... For a gold nib pen, it's not super cheap in general, but um, so this might be a little bit more inexpensive. So if you're on a trip over there and you want to check one out, definitely do. They have some really, really, really gorgeous Machier pens over there. But thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to check out my other stuff, 
And uh, if you have any questions about the pin, let me know, and either me or Andy will be more than happy to answer them. And thanks for tuning in, guys. Bye.